Okay, hi. Before I start the video on the HF box, okay, just let me uh, say thank you to all the viewers who have supported Quickonomics uh, for the past few months. Uh, recently, we have been receiving a lot of views and subscriptions through our YouTube uh, page. Okay, so if you are a viewer on YouTube now and you are watching this video, uh, thank you very much for supporting. Uh, what I would like to request you to do is to go to quickonomics.com and subscribe over there instead because that is where we give you constant updates you know about new posts and information including uh, stuff about the workshops that we're going to be conducting at the end of the year okay so thank you for thank you for your support and it would be great if you could subscribe to us at quickonomics.com and also if you wanted to show more support we actually have a facebook fan page Okay, you just go to Facebook and search for Quickonomics. Uh, do us a favor by liking us, and this would really help us a lot on, along the way. Okay, so let's start on the video on the Edgeworth box. Okay, so the Edgeworth box is basically uh, a tool, okay, to analyze resource distribution and how people can be um, better off to trade. Okay, this is going to be a bit similar to our first chapter in trade and specialization, but this is more towards a general equilibrium point of view, whereby we analyze more than one or two individuals in a market where there are more than two goods. I uh, sorry, more than one good. Okay, assuming yes, there's two goods. Okay, so I think the best way to teach you this is through a story. All right. So the story is this. Okay, we have got two individuals. They are Andy and Bill. Okay, and Andy and Bill each has got two kinds of products. Okay, uh, or goods or stuff. Right, and this is the scenario. Andy has got 10 pens and 20 sweets. Okay, Bill has got 40 pens and 10 sweets. Okay, so we're going to let the pens be X and the sweets be Y. Okay, so now just let me show you uh, how this would look like on an individual graph. Okay, so individually this is what it's going to look like. Okay, now take a look at Andy. Okay, Andy has got 20 sweets initially and 10 pens. Okay, so his opportunity cost of like trading them away, okay, will be like two. So it'll be two y per x, alright. And this is indifference. His indifference curve. Okay, he was here because this makes him happy, alright. And now let's take a look at Bill. Bill initially had ten sweets and he had uh, forty pence, alright. And this is his budget line here. His his so-called price line because you know to trade away or to produce this, he would have to give up one. Okay, one uh, sweet for four pens, so that's why it's one over four over here, and this is in difference curve. Okay, now these two individuals seem to be happy, but you know that actually there's actually a way to make them even happier. Okay, and how can we do that? Okay, now take a look at this. Okay, now this is the initial setup of the Edgeworth box. Okay, so now as you can see, what I've done is actually I've combined the two graphs together. Okay, you see this pink part over here. This is the pink part for Andy. And this blue part is the blue part for Bill. You just turn it around, you know, it's the same thing, like that. See? Okay, so basically it's just a combination. You just take two graphs, okay, take two graphs and combine them together like this. Like that, yeah, okay? So this is uh, the amount of Y for ND and the amount of X for ND. And this is the amount of Y for Bill and the amount of X for Bill. Okay, now, um, the, the important thing is that the length, okay, the, the length and the, and the breadth of this has to be so-called accurate in proportion and accurate in terms of the figure okay I can tell you that the total here is going to be 30 and the total here is going to be 30 as well how do I know because if you look initially okay, at the story here okay, I know that uh, Andy has got 10 pens and Bill has got 40 pens okay so if I take 10 plus 10 plus 40, that's 50. So 50 is the initial endowment of the number of pens that they have. So we know that the x-axis is pens, right? So this is 50, this is 50 over here. Okay, and the same thing for sweets. 20 plus 10 is 30. So this is 30, this is 30. That's how I came out with the box. Okay, so now, um, we know that the initial endowment for each individual is going to be here. Why? Because Andy initially had 10, 10 pens and um, 20 sweets here. And for Bill, you turn it upside down, okay, this is 10, okay, and this is 40, similar to this graph over here, okay? So now that, that is the initial setup of the Edgeworth box, okay? Now, if you were to add in, like, the, the line, the line for, the, the, the budget line, okay, it, it will look like this. Okay, I'm just going to use pencil, okay, it will look like this, over here, alright? Uh, it's a little bit light, but uh, I think you get the idea, okay? It's, it's basically, I'm drawing this line. Okay, but I'm omitting it because uh, I know that 
we're gonna draw more lines and I don't wanna confuse everybody out there. But uh, you know what, just let me darken it a little bit so that you can see. Alright, okay, so at least this is in pencil, you won't be too confused. So now we know that this is two. Okay? Now uh, it will be the same for, for, for Bill's side as well. Okay now, you will notice that you know these two indifference curves, alright, there is a little eye in the middle. Okay, this like like oval shape, you know, it looks like a fish. Okay, so every time that there's a fish there, it just means that okay, both parties by trading can make each other better off. Okay? So now let me show you what I mean. You see now if this price line here is two, okay, I can actually change alright the I can actually change the, the 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 price. How? Okay, by introducing introducing trade between Andy and Bill. Okay, so what is the terms of the trade? What is the international price? Remember this term? Okay, so what if I were to reduce the price from two to something else, maybe uh, one quarter okay, or one? Okay, so if I reduce this to one, that means it's going to be two times flatter, right? Okay, so I'm going to use purple, and I'm going to draw a new budget line. Okay, and this budget line is going to be rotating around the initial point because it's an uh, endowment, remember? Okay, this we did this in um, chapter two, okay, income in kind. So this is going to be one. It's flatter. Can you see that ND can actually move up to a higher indifference curve? Here, see. That means he's going to be more. He's going to be well off. You know, he's, he's going to be better off. So this is U one A. Okay, so ND's new indifference curve. Okay. Looking at Bill, you know, Bill can actually do the same thing. So now, since the international price is 1, okay, and, and 1 is going to be steeper than this, so what, what's going to happen is that this is going to rotate upwards like that. Okay, 4 times. It's 4 times steeper because it's uh, 1 is 4 times bigger than a quarter. So this is going to be 1. Okay, so now this is a new budget line. Can you see that if they trade, Bill is going to be on a higher indifference curve? You... U B one. Okay, so that clearly shows the benefits of trade. Okay, but how do we know what is the correct price to trade? Okay, by using the Edgeworth box. Okay, so now assuming that one is a correct price, one is the price that will make both of them well off. Okay, actually it is lah. Okay, but uh, what we are going to look at is Pareto efficiency. What is Pareto efficiency? Okay, it is the point okay where one individual cannot be better off without making another individual worse off. So Andy cannot be better off without making Bill worse off. So that is Pareto efficiency. Okay, take a look at the write up okay on the blog post so that you will understand more about Pareto efficiency. Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate Pareto efficiency. Now. We know that the international price is 1, so we're going to rotate this, right? Along the initial endowment, it's going to be flatter by 2 times. Remember? Okay, so we're going to draw it here like that. Okay, now, it has to go through this point because this was the initial endowment. But going through this point is a pure coincidence. Okay, I, did, I didn't plan for it to go through this point. It was pure coincidence. So you don't have to make sure that it goes through this line over here. Okay, so anyways... This is going to be 1. And now I'm going to draw my new indifference curves. Okay, so if you are still confused at this point, just refer back to this. Okay, refer back to this and you just have to imagine that the blue lines are not there. Okay, so now we're going to analyze for ND. Okay, just imagine that the blue lines are not there. Okay, we know that for ND, his indifference curve is going to move upwards. Okay, it's going to move upwards. So we're going to arrive somewhere here. That's U. B, eh, sorry, U A one. Okay, so now for Bill, okay, to help you, I'm gonna turn this shit around, okay, upside down like that, so that you can see better. Imagine all the pink lines are not there. Okay, so now we're just gonna tackle the blue lines. Okay, you can see that he can go onto a higher indifference curve. Okay, so what's gonna happen is that the indifference curve is gonna shift up. Okay, and it's going to be tangent here, and that's uh okay. I gotta turn it this way write the, the notations properly it's going to be u1b okay now as you can see okay the important points is this okay, i'm going to use uh, let me see i'm going to use yeah purple okay now look at this indifference curve over here the new one okay basically a new one and this one okay what has happened now is that okay take a look at this they are like this. 
tangent to one another. So this means that they are Pareto in uh, Pareto efficient. Why? Because um, A cannot move on to a higher indifference curve, okay, and um, and B cannot move on to a higher indifference curve in this point. So for A to maximize its utility, it has to go this way. For B to max maximize its utility, it has to go this way. Okay, so that is what is uh, Pareto efficient. But you see, in in the edge roof box, we can actually have a situation like this, whereby we have got many tangent points along the whole box. Okay, and this line over here is called the contract curve. Okay, the contract curve basically links all this uh, you know, together. Okay, so my question to you is, what do you think determines whether they are at this point, this point, this point, or this point? Okay, it is the initial endowment. Okay, so the initial endowment will decide on which point of the contract curve they're going to be. Okay, uh, by being at this point, does it mean that B is worse off than A? Yeah, I mean, uh, sorry, A is better off than B a lot more. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not true, but both of them have maximized their utility through through the sharing of resources, you know, trading. So there's no way that they can move away because uh, this is Pareto efficient. Okay, yeah, it, it may be freaking unfair if, let's say, you know, we have a situation like this. Okay, but who's to blame? <laughs> it's the initial, it's the initial uh, endowment that determines them to be at this this point over here. You know, at, at this point, uh, Bill will be very sad. Okay, and A will be damn happy, but uh, there's nothing that can be done. At least, okay, B is better off in initial initially uh, than he was because because of this situation over here. Okay, so now that's the H worth box, okay, and uh, I hope you've learned something about Pareto efficiency today.